Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys coming by the channel and making some time to spend with me today on the video. Always appreciate that. And guys, today I want to share with you a comment I got a couple days ago in regards to the Bassmaster Elite Series uh, down at uh, Smith Lake last week. Um, this particular angler was telling me about how big of a, how many fish were killed during that Bassmaster tournament. And I want to read you this, and then I want to comment on sort of the bigger picture surrounding uh, bass mortality in tournaments. We're going to get to that in today's video. I'm um, also, guys, just wanted to extend a big thank you out there to everybody that's taken time to subscribe here to Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate that. And a big thank you from me and my family for everybody that's been using and bookmarking my Tackle Warehouse link that I put in the description of every video. Um, all you guys that are doing that and getting your tackle through Tackle Warehouse through my link, you guys are really doing a big part to support the channel. So uh, much appreciated there. Okay, guys, um, you've heard me talk a lot about the last year about, you know, I've been, I've, I've been, I've, I've came down hard on tournaments for a lot of different reasons and not tournaments per se, but the way that tournaments are being run and scheduled. And I want to read you guys, Bassmaster had their Elite Series tournament at Smith Lake last, uh, uh, about a week and a half ago, otherwise known as the Spotlighters Benefit Tournament. And I want to read you a comment I got from one of the local anglers that just sent me this yesterday here. Then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Okay, it says, uh, Randy, the Elite, Randy, the Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament was here last weekend in Coleman, Alabama. I went fishing the day after the tournament and launched my boat where the Bassmaster event was for four days. Dead bass were floating everywhere around the launch area where I launched. Everyone in this tournament during the Bassmaster was using forward-facing sonar to catch their bass deep. Those bass were taken from deep water in the cooler deep water and put into 90 degree live wells and then they were beat the hell out of for miles back to the weigh-in. It's a shame how disrespectful they are to the resource. Okay, guys, now, first of all, I want to say <clears throat> I wasn't there, so I didn't witness if there was any dead bass or not. So in defense of Bassmaster, I'm not, I'm not pointing a finger um, because I don't, this is, I'm just relating to you what this local said here. So whether or not that occurred, uh, you know, that's still up in the air, however, <laughs> <clears throat> it's been my experience from tournaments, fishing tournaments, that I have no reason to doubt it. And that's what I really want to talk about a little bit in this particular tournament. And it's not just Bassmaster, it's MLF, it's all of them. Because, guys, I have fished tournaments. I fished Bassmaster tournaments and I fished FLW tournaments that were absolute fish kills because they had the tournaments at the time of year that there's no business having any tournaments that time of year. So here's one of the things I want to say, you know, when we talk about conservation, because if you're a bass angler and you're not a conservationist, then you don't have any business being a bass angler because part of being a bass angler and part of the responsibility you have as a bass angler is to be an adamant conservationist because if we don't protect the resource, nobody's going to and nobody's going to hand it off to the next generation and we take care of it. So anytime something like this comes out, we've got to call it out. Any type of abuse to the resource has got to be called out and addressed. Now here's one of the things I'm gonna talk about again, and I just, I don't understand it, what the deal is on this. It's like, there are no reason whatsoever to have any tournaments during the, during the peak spawning periods on any lake. And there's usually about a three to four week window where most of the fish spawn. Yeah, there may be some a little earlier or later, but you know, 90% of the bass spawn during heavily during a peak period when their water temperatures are in their low 60s, you know, for the first time in the spring. And there's no reason to have tournaments like there was at Smith Lake during the post-spawn in early summer out there because those fish that have went out to deep water, they're still fatigued from spawning a lot of times. They go deep, they're weak, and when they're caught out of, out of that deep water, we've talked about this before, they, they suffer barotrauma issues. Now, barotrauma basically is a, it's a condition that damages a fish. It damages their eyes, it damages their internal organs from the pressure of being brought up out of deep water too quick. Even if you fizz it, you know, fizzing doesn't make any difference. It's like they're still gonna die from delayed mortality like what happened in the tournament here with all these bass floating around. I've seen it over and over, guys. I've seen it over again. I mean, I, as much as I fished, I can't tell you how many dead bass that you see floating around the tournament site after a tournament's been there. Um, I remember one FLW tournament we fished down in June down at Kentucky Lake years ago. And 
after I weighed my fish in, it was hot, you know, muggy and super hot. I walked down there by the, the fish release area, guys, and they had two massive cool. I'm talking these big industrial size coolers packed full of dead, you know, three to six pound bass. It absolutely, it couldn't even close the lid. There were so many dead ones on there. And that's not, that's not, Necess that's not the fault of the tournament organizations in terms of fish care. It's the fault of the tournament organizations for scheduling those tournaments during times of the year that we have no business scheduling tournaments. Response if 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 a tournament organization wants to be responsible and they're they're conservation minded and they 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 care about the resource, we shouldn't be having any tournaments between the key spawn period and during that early summer period where the water gets hot and those fish are still recuperating. So in other words, tournaments should be scheduled from like October until the, until late March. And that's the way they used to be, guys. You, 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 back when I started fishing Bassmaster, we had most of our tournaments from October until March. The Bassmasters Classic was usually in, in August or October and um, people didn't fish during the summertime very much. But what happened, as best as I can remember there, a bunch of guys that were deer hunters threw a big fit to Ray Scott saying, oh, we don't want our deer hunting messed up in the fall time of the year during the rut, so we don't want to fish tournaments. And then tournaments got taken away from the fall time. We used to have over half of our schedule done by the first of the year because our tournaments, October, November, and December, we'd have tournaments, and then we'd have tournaments January, February, and March. That's the way to do it. These tournament organizations have no business having tournaments on top of the spawn or in hot water, especially in the light of spotlighting for bass, because this is another byproduct of spotlighting for bass, is that as these fish consistently get taken out of deeper water more and more, they're gonna consistently have these delayed mortality issues from the barotrauma issues. And um, I, I don't understand, why, why are we undermining the very thing we love? It's like, you know, everybody out there, it's like Bassmaster and MLF, they have a, be a vested interest in conserving the sport and maintaining the sustainability of the sport. And bass anglers have the same thing, but at the same time, we undermine our very future that we have in the sport. Bassmaster undermines their very business model, you know, with stuff like this. This dude right here that sent me this comment, I'm sure he's talked to all of his buddies about it doesn't do anything for the public image of Bassmaster, you know, when they've got a bunch of dead fish floating around some dude's home lake, you know, after seeing guys running around for four days, a hundred miles an hour on the lake. But what we're gonna have is this has always been an issue, you know, uh, killing fish from tournaments, but it's going to get, get even worse now until forward-facing sonar is banned from tournaments simply because of the inherent problems you have with catching fish out of deeper water. So anyway, guys, the only thing you can really do is just be vocal and loud, you know, send emails, send voicemails to MLF at Bassmaster, let them know you don't want forward-facing sonar, let them know you don't want tournaments held during the spawn, let them know you don't want tournaments held during the summer, and have those tournaments with no spotlighting during the cold weather months of the year to ensure the fish survi survivability. I mean, it's easy, it's like, the, the the number of fish that people would lose, if, if they had tournaments during the cold weather months of the year and that was it, the number of fish that we would lose from delayed mortality would be tremendously less, especially in correlation with taking spotlighting out of the equation. Because once you take spotlighting out of the equation, the overall catch rate comes from shallower water, which is gonna be more survivable, survivable to the bass. And of course, the colder water is gonna be more conducive to not having those fish die from being stressed out in the live wells all day. So anyway, guys, let me know what y'all think and appreciate it. We'll talk later.